This episode of Steve's Outdoor Adventures is sponsored by the Farwide app, outdoor intelligence in the palm of your hand. When John first joined the team at Steve's Outdoor Adventures, I remember him telling me that he wanted to be a sheep hunter and he wanted the Grand Slam of North American sheep. But first he had a Super Bowl to play in and ironically, he was playing for the Rams. And honestly, even though he and I are business partners, I'm still his hunting consultant and I wanted him to get some more hunting experience first. Now I know John, and if he starts sheep hunting, he's not gonna dip his toe in. He's gonna jump in with both feet, and that's what sheep hunters do. They commit themselves fully to sheep hunting. And after making John wait for a year, the right opportunity came up, and I booked John on his very first bighorn sheep hunt. So we arrived in Mexico, in Cabo, on Monday afternoon. I was met by my guides Armando and Juan. Uh, got through customs easy. Camera operators arrived shortly after I did. Uh, we were able to load up the truck, you know, get all our baggage, cameras, rifles, all the things we were gonna need for the hunt, load up the truck. And then instead of heading all the way to camp that first night, we decided to make a detour into uh, the hometown of one of our guides in Todos Santos. Drove to La Paz, and now we are staying in La Paz overnight, um, just so we don't have to deal with the dirt road late at night. You know, better be safe than sorry. Uh, we'll get up early in the morning and, and uh, finish the journey into camp. So we pulled up to the camp, we accessed via a mining road, and then driving the truck up a dry riverbed. And camp is set you know, amongst the cactus and the mountains. It's really a, a, a beautiful setting. It's nothing luxurious. You know, it's, it's a humble camp, but you know, we're surrounded by incredible people um, from the outfitters, the guides, the spotters, uh, the camp staff, everybody working has just been absolutely tremendous. You know, comfortable accommodations. It's rugged, but it's all that you need. Um, we're not here on a you know, luxury vacation. We're here with a purpose, and that's to, you know, get out into the wilderness find bighorn sheep and, you know, hopefully uh, harvest one. After arriving at the camp, John's first order of business is to shoot his rifle and check the zero. He's traveled a long ways and there's no telling how many different baggage handlers have put their hands on this gun case and if the gun is still sighted in or not. And when you're on a hunt of any magnitude, whether it be just a deer hunt in the Western States or a sheep hunt in Mexico, Always check your zero. So we went to the dry riverbed. Uh, the guide set up a target, and you know we zeroed the rifle. It was spot on, and then went out for an afternoon hunt that Tuesday. This week, John is hunting with the Bergara Premier Series Highlander, chambered in 300 Winchester Magnum. It's topped with the Burris Eliminator 3 laser scope, and it's shooting custom hand-loaded Pendleton ammunition. John has practiced diligently with this ammunition and he is deadly accurate out to 750 yards, which is more than enough range for this desert bighorn sheep hunt. This week's Checking Zero was sponsored by the Adventure Armory. Rifle, scope, and ammo packages for hunters. Right, your hunting fuel deer down some yeah, arrows right. and all that. All the time. Yeah. So we actually got on some sheep pretty quickly, a ram and a ewe. It was apparent from the start that the ram was young and he wasn't gonna be uh, a ram that we were gonna go after, but it was still, it's always nice when you go out on a hunt, seeing 
the game that you're intending to harvest right off the bat. It just lifts your spirits immediately. Uh, not seeing animals is part of hunting. You have to be patient. You know, it, it can definitely test your patience, but to, to see sheep immediately was great. And then just get a feel, you know, if you don't spend time out here in this terrain and this landscape, it's hard to be effective on the glass. So just getting a chance to, you know, look around, you know, size different things, get a feel for distances, and then, you know, get introduced to the terrain that we were gonna see, it was uh, ultimately really helpful. At the end of John's first day, he is officially a sheep hunter, joining a club that he has long dreamed of and is now finally a member. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Pendleton Ammunition, loading bullets one round at a time. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Bergara Rifles. A passion for precision. Every barrel, every rifle. In the desert, getting an early start is important. You rise before dawn and dress in the dark. And even though you're hunting in the desert, the mornings are cool. You feel the brisk air as you ride in the truck on the way out to the hunting area. The smell of the Baja landscape is also distinct and very unique. The desert mixed with salt water from the nearby Sea of Cortez. Mid-morning, temperatures start to rise. The jackets are shed and layers are dropped. The temperature will rise with the sun, likely over 90 degrees by midday. Most hunters quit when the sun is high, but in Mexico, as the sun rises, the shade moves and sheep rise and move to a new shady spot. And this is when you find them. So the style is hunting hard and hunting smart. So it's a very rugged landscape. The temperatures get really hot during the day. So you have to be strategic. You can only carry so much water, you know, and that's a limiting factor. If you don't have enough water, you can't keep hunting. So you wanna make sure you're smart. You're trying to spot rams without overexerting yourself. And then once, once you have a ram targeted, obviously you go after them with everything you have but you have to make sure that in the middle of the day when the sheep, you don't anticipate the sheep are gonna be moving, you stay in the shade. So, you know, sheep hunting is hard. You have to get high. You have to make the shot when it counts, but you also have to be disciplined enough to understand that there's a time and a place for heavy exertion and there's also a time and a place to be smart. We've been glassing for a couple hours from the same spot, not seeing anything. And uh, most importantly, we're about to lose the shade. So we're gonna, you know, pack up from here, change locations, keep glassing, you know, these mountains and uh, see if we can find something. It was kind of a slow morning in terms of spotting. You know, we were, we were on the glass for a while. It got really hot. So we found a shady spot, um, kind of at the front of a cliff face. And we all laid down for a siesta. You know, spent the hottest part of the day out of the sun. And, 
you know, we stayed on the glass, we kept hunting hard, but we just weren't seeing anything. So we ended up making our way back to the trucks to where we had accessed via the dry riverbed. And I don't know how on earth one of the guides spotted this ram, but a ram was spotted from two plus miles away with binoculars. It was almost like it was fateful, it was meant to be. Um, you know, we took our time, set up the spotting scopes, got some phone scope footage of him, but even with the phone scope and a high powered uh, spotting scope from Burris, this ram was still so far away, he was difficult to see. But we knew that for the next day we had a target. So, you know, our guides all discussed, you know, they're experts on, the, on this landscape and on these animals. And we, you know, discussed what we had seen and made a plan. Let's be honest, I gotta, I gotta walk up like 50, 50, 75 yards. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Burris Optics. Find what matters. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Marathon Seat Covers. We've got you covered. With great anticipation, the hunters rise before dawn and drive out to start glassing for the ram. The goal was to locate him before the sun rose high in the sky and he bedded for the day. It doesn't look bad at all. So we woke up the next day in the morning with a target in mind. Uh, we accessed the Ajito a little bit further down because we had spotted the ram from so far away. We wanted to make sure we were, you know, within range to, to make a stalk. So we just had one of the trucks get a flat tire. So we stopped. Some guys got out with glassing and we spotted the ram. So I put on the hat I've been wearing on every hunt that I've been successful on. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can make an assessment. And if it's the right ram, I'm going to put a stalk on it. So we'll see. That same ram, along with a bunch of ewes and smaller rams, was spotted almost immediately. I think we saw, you know, 10, 10 sheep that morning. The guides fixed the flat tire and quickly drove to a location where they knew that they could get across from the sheep and locate him. They knew that he was a ram, but they needed to get a much closer look before determining that he was a mature ram. The team climbed up the mountainside and through the cactus that covered the landscape like pine trees on a Montana hillside. The ground here is covered in loose rocks and thorny brush that grabs at you as you walk by. Every inch of the mountain is earned. Nearing the top, the guides stop to rest. And with a stunning view of the Sea of Cortez that just days before had only been seen in John's dreams, the team hydrated and rested their weary legs. And a short while later, they resumed the climb up the mountain with the ram somewhere above them. As a professional athlete, John understands mental toughness. And on climbs for sheep, you have to look past the pain, ignoring your body's calls for help and push on. Because sheep hunters have to believe the glory ahead is worth every minute of misery.
With these sheep still there, the guides know that the ram is near, bedded somewhere out of sight, and so the waiting game began. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures is sponsored by the Far Wide app. Outdoor intelligence in the palm of your hand. This segment is sponsored by Adventure Armory. Rifle, scope, and ammunition packages shipped, ready to shoot. If you'd like to book this week's adventure for yourself, give our office a call. We will gladly take your calls, answer your questions, and help you book the hunting or fishing adventure of a lifetime. Now at the top of the mountain, lead guide Chepo has located the sheep, but not the ram and John is waiting for the ram to stand up and reveal his location. The move paid off. From the lower vantage point, the guide spotted the ram and John quickly got set up. And then the ram walked out. I've been getting play-by-play -play all morning from John uh, on his desert sheep hunt. You know, it's his first sheep hunt, so he's really excited. So I'm constantly getting emails from him using his Delorme inReach uh, from the mountainside down there. And he's been making a move on a ram all morning, and I just got the message from him that he killed his first bighorn sheep. His desert bighorn is down on the ground. And if you want to see what this looks like, it's pretty cool. Delorme inReach actually sends a message along with a map link. When I click on that map link, there it is. You can see exactly where John's at. You can see his message to me. And now you can watch me type him a message back. The sheep don't go into necessarily into uh, forgiving country. So when I shot the ram, he tumbled down the mountainside and we had to hike back up and around. And even though he was only you know, 220 yards away, we had to hike not very far in terms of total distance, but through some really heavy bush and pretty steep stuff. We hiked about a quarter mile back over to where he was. And then, you know, trusting the advice of the guides and the spotters, um, we, we hung out up above while they went down and recovered the ram. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. You know, it's the type of terrain where you can get in a lot of trouble really quick. And we didn't want to imperil anybody. Um, you know, have so much pride that said, look, I have to go down that mountainside and be a part of this. I wanted to, but I knew that the safe decision, the right decision to protect the crew and protect everybody involved was to, was to watch the experts do it. So they made their way down the mountain and recovered that ram using a rope and basically dragged that, that ram back up to the top up a sheer mountainside. It was an amazing, um, really an amazing feat. I didn't think it was possible. And you know, this there's some real uh, real experts in this crew. John's first sheep hunt was a success, and as predicted, he is now obsessed with sheep hunting, and we are already planning his next hunt into the mountains in pursuit of another ram. As with all of our clients, and even more so with John. I revel in his success. I live for hearing the enthusiasm in his voice when he recounts the events from that sheep hunt and the sheer joy that being in the hunting industry has brought into his life. You know, I feel very proud that I've, you know, that I've um, harvested a sheep, you know, a desert bighorn especially. Um, this is an, an amazing setting, an incredible country. You know, the guys that helped us are great people, but what you realize is as the hunter in this situation, you're just one member of a team of people that make this happen. 
from the people that plan the logistics of it to the people that set up camp, you know, handle transport into the camp. And then, you know, without the expert crew of guides and spotters that we have, uh, this wouldn't have been possible. So, you know, I may be the hunter in this situation, I may be the person that pulled the trigger, but I'm just one member of an overall team that made this happen, and this is our RAM together. I can't explain enough how grateful I am for the opportunity, um, for this amazing landscape, for the incredible setting, and for the, just the, the great people that we met while we were down here. It felt like this, the whole thing was, it was just a magical experience. And I think I walk away, you know, part of what I love about hunting is it tests certain aspects of your personality. And, you know, for me it's patience, perseverance, you know, you get to test and see what you're truly made of on difficult hunts. I'm also grateful for the opportunity to go and, and see where these animals live. I love bighorn sheep. I want to, you know, go and experience what they're experiencing and go to places that very few people go. You know, get off the, get off the beaten path. Go out into the wilderness, experience it firsthand, see where these sheep live. I mean, in, to a certain extent in hunting, you're, ma you're matching wits with these animals. You know, and every time you do that, it's a road game. You're traveling to them. And going out there and, you know, not just, not just harvesting a sheep, I mean, that's the ultimate goal, but the overall experience is what's really special. Working alongside great people, persevering under difficult circumstances, and ultimately achieving your goal um, is a great way to feel fulfilled. Throughout John's life, he's always been a member of a team, and now we're very pleased to have him as a member of the Steve's Outdoor Adventures team, and I'm looking forward to his next hunting adventure. And for any of you out there who have ever dreamed on going on a sheep hunt, or booking any other big game hunting or fishing adventure, give our office a call. We're always available to take your calls, answer your questions, and help you book the hunting or fishing trip of a lifetime. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this week's show. But please remember to join us again next week when we bring you another exciting episode of Steve's Outdoor Adventures.